Hey, what's up guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. So you have that shiny new VMware ESXi server that you've loaded up in the home lab. What next? What do you need to do to get things configured? Well, stick around. I'm going to dive into all of the things that I normally do with a brand new VMware ESXi server configurations settings changes, and just tips and tweaks that I've learned over the years with working with ESXi in production as well as a home lab. So as always, grab that hot cup of coffee, let's dive right in. The first thing that we're going to configure is the management network. This is where everything starts with your ESXi host. This is how you connect to the host, it's how you manage it. It is where we set up the IP address information, DNS information, network adapters that we're going to use for the management network, VLANs, and the list goes on and on. So let's look and see how we configure that. VMware has what's called the Direct Console User Interface. And this is the interface that you get when you log directly into the console of the ESXi server. All you need to do to interact with the DCUI is hit F2, and that allows us to log in to start managing things. Once we log in, we're going to navigate to Configure Management Network. The first thing that I want to call out is the Network Adapters Configuration. By default, VMware will choose one of the adapters that is active during the installation of ESXi. Now, for proper management availability, you want to have more than one network adapter configured for this management IP address. So as you can see, I have another network interface available that I can choose to also carry that management traffic. If one of the network cables is unplugged from one of the management adapters, the other network adapter will carry on traffic and you probably will not even notice a blip in a ping command. So I'm choosing the additional network adapter. So now we have some redundancy for that management network. Now let's look at VLANs. If you have a specific VLAN that you want the management traffic to flow through for your ESXi host, you will need to tag that here. ESXi is simply just going to come out of the box configured for untagged traffic. So it's just going to accept the native VLAN that is configured on your network switch. So if you have a specific management network that you want the ESXi host to communicate on, you need to enter that here. I am just leaving this blank for now, since this is just a nested test environment. This is where you would configure those VLANs. A call out about the VLANs in the previous network adapters, you would make sure that your physical uplinks are tagged for that management VLAN. If you were to select multiple network adapters and not have those management VLANs tagged on the ports for your network switch, if one of the uplinks were pulled, that other network adapter would not be able to communicate on that management VLAN and you would lose connectivity. Navigating down to IPv4, here is where we set a static IP address. So if we want to set a static IP address, we would do that here and we would make sure to configure a network mask, a default gateway, all of the normal configurations. Under DNS configuration, this is where we would configure our DNS servers that we want to use locally or public resolvers. And also for the host name, here is where we would actually set that host name. So I'm going to set that. I'm going to set the DNS configuration as I want when I hit enter. Also with custom DNS configuration suffixes, this is where we enter a local DNS search order suffix. If there are local resources that we want to access from our ESXi server via that local DNS zone, this is where we would configure that information. After we configure all of our network settings, we simply hit escape and we're going to be asked if we want to apply the changes and restart the management network. We're going to enter Y. The management network has been restarted and we see that we have the ESXi 8 test for the host name. So that tells us that all of those changes have been applied to our network management interface. Now that we have the management network configured with connectivity and all of our settings, 
I want to log into the ESXi host client and enable SSH as we will use SSH for additional configuration. So I'm going to log in. We're going to click the host node. We're going to click actions, services, and we're going to enable secure shell SSH. Now that we have SSH enabled, I can use PuTTY to SSH into the ESXi host. And there we have it. We have successfully logged in with SSH. The next thing is patching our ESXi host. We may have installed a version that we pulled from an ISO image that does not have the latest ESXi patches. So how do we do that? After we established SSH connectivity to our ESXi host, we can now run some commands from the command line to make sure that we have the latest patches installed. ESXi lets you know which software version you're running by something called a software profile. Now you can see your software profile by the command ESXi software profile get, and it will return to you the software profile that you are currently running. As you can see, I'm running ESXi 8.0, and the software profile is 205.13.097-standard. The standard designation means that we are also running VMware tools as part of the installation image. So that is our software profile. If we want to update to a certain software profile, there is a command that you can do that. To get the software profiles, the VMware Patch Center actually has the latest patches for ESXi listed. So if we find a specific patch version that we want to upgrade to, then we can use that patch profile to upgrade our ESXi server. All we would need to do in that case is use the command that I have pasted here is ESXi software profile update. And then we're pulling directly from the VMware patch center. So as you can see, if I were on a down level ESXi host and I wanted to upgrade to ESXi 8.0, then I would simply update the profile. It pulls down the latest uh, patch level, which is ESXi 8, and it applies that patch level to our ESXi host. The next thing we're going to do is set the ESXi time and date to point to an NTP server. We can log into the host client once again, we're going to navigate to host and then to manage. And you will see under the system tab, we have several options, but the bottom option is time and date. And as you can see, the NTP service status is stopped. So we want to configure our ESXi host to point to an NTP server. If we do that, we can simply select the edit NTP settings. We're going to select use network time protocol, enable NTP client. Make sure this is set to start and stop with host. And that ensures that when we restart our ESXi host, the settings are persistent for our NTP server. So I'm going to plug in the NTP server that I want to use. us.pool.ntp.org, and we're going to save that setting. Now that we have our NTP settings set, you'll still notice that the NTP service status is stopped. So let's navigate over to services, NTPD, and we're going to start that service. And you notice now it is set to running. If we go back over to the system tab and we refresh, we notice that the NTP service status is now set to running. So now we have configured our NTP server settings for our ESXi host and its configuration. One thing I like to do as well with my ESXi host is point those hosts to my syslog server. And syslog servers are great to capture logging and to go back for historical troubleshooting. To point your ESXi host to a specific syslog server, there are a couple of commands that we can easily run from an SSH session to get that syslog server configuration set. I'm going to paste in the first command to set the configuration to a specific syslog server. And for the syslog server, I'm issuing the command ESX CLI system syslog config set, and then we pass in the log host parameter pointed to our syslog server. Then we simply need to restart our syslog service. 
Now our syslog configuration is set, as simple as that. What if we want to attach our ESXi server to shared iSCSI storage, which is a popular storage target that many may be running in production or in their home lab? Well, that is very easy. We can add an ESXi iSCSI software adapter that allows us to communicate with our iSCSI storage. How do we do that? In the ESXi host client, click on host and then storage. Under our storage node, we can navigate to the adapters tab. You'll notice under the adapters tab, we have the option for software iSCSI. It pops up the dialog box, configure iSCSI. We're going to flag this from disabled to enabled. And if you notice, after a couple of moments, it automatically generates the name and alias that will be the iSCSI initiator that will communicate with the iSCSI target that we may have provisioned on a SAN or NAS or another storage device. It's important to note that simply adding the iSCSI software adapter is not the only steps that we need to perform to configure iSCSI storage. We will need to provision a VM kernel adapter that will allow us to communicate with that iSCSI storage. However, this step is necessary in a general way to begin that process. Next, I want to show you guys how you add a standalone ESXi host to a vCenter server that you have provisioned. Adding an ESXi host to vCenter server opens up all of the enterprise features that we get with a full-blown vSphere solution. And it's definitely the configuration that you want to have if you're in a production environment or if you want to experiment more fully in a lab environment. Let me show you guys how to do that. In vCenter server, we are logged in we're going to click our data center node, which is the very top node underneath our vCenter server node. So clicking the data center, we're going to right click and we're going to choose the option add host. Now we have the IP address for our ESXi host that we have been working with in the host client as well as SSH. I'm going to enter that IP address now. Click next. We're going to enter the username and password, which is our root account that we're going to use to attach to this standalone ESXi server. And we get the default security alert for the self-signed certificate. We're going to click yes. And now we get the host summary screen that we're about to add this particular standalone ESXi host. We're going to click next. We're going to keep the evaluation license. We're going to click next. We're going to not enable lockdown mode. We're going to place this simply in the root of our data center node. Click next. And we are now ready to complete this process. Very simple to add an ESXi host to vCenter server. I'm going to click finish. And you will see the host first pop in as disconnected. And this is not anything alarming as vCenter is setting up its connection to the host with the special user and all of the configuration information. And after a few moments, as you see, the host goes to a normal appearance. So now we have this ESXi host fully managed by our vCenter server. Next, I'm going to show you guys how to add a special VM kernel adapter. VM kernel adapters are specialized, really, IP addresses in ESXi that allow ESXi to communicate with specialized services in a vSphere environment. These specialized services may be vMotion, iSCSI, or vSAN. To establish that connectivity, we need to add special VM kernel adapters with those IP addresses to enable that communication. To do that, simply right-click on your ESXi host in vCenter. We're going to go to Add Networking, and as you see, it brings up the Add Networking wizard. We're going to select VM Kernel Network Adapter. I'm going to select Select an Existing Standard Switch, and we're going to choose our default vSwitch 0. Click Next. And as you can see, we have the next configuration as our port properties. Here we select a network label, we can configure a VLAN ID, IP address settings, MTU values, and also tell vSphere 
which specialized VM kernel services that we are going to enable with this IP address. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to set this as vMotion and I'm going to leave the VLAN ID as none, IPv4, and we're going to set the custom MTU value at 9000, which is our jumbo frames value. The TCP IP stack, we're going to leave it default and I'm going to select vMotion. Click next. We're going to use static IPv4 settings. We're going to simply use 192.168.1.100 class C and leaving the DNS server values as the same. And we're to the end of creating that VM kernel adapter. So we simply click finish. Finally, I'm going to show you guys how to license your ESXi host. Now you can do this either from the host client on the ESXi host directly or from vCenter server. However, if you have already managed your ESXi host with a vCenter server, you will get an error message if you try to apply the license directly on the ESXi host client. I'm going to show you how to enable that in both places. In the host client, if you click under host and manage, you're going to see the licensing tab. If you click the assign license, you're going to be able to paste in your license key that if you're a home lab enthusiast, maybe you have purchased that through a VMUG Advantage subscription, which I highly recommend, or in a production environment, you're going to enter your production key. If it's managed by vCenter, as we've already done, if you click the assign license, you're going to get the error message. The license for this host is being managed by vCenter. If we flip over to vCenter server, we can go to the hamburger menu on the upper left hand corner. We're going to go to administration and we're going to navigate to licenses. As you can see, this brings up the vCenter licenses section of our interface. We can add a license here. So if we have an ESXi host license, we would add that license key, go through the wizard and it will simply add the license. However, there's another step that you need to perform as you need to click your assets. You will see the option for vCenter server, hosts, vSAN cluster, supervisors, which is VMware Tanzu and other solutions. Or we're going to click the host button. You have the option here to choose the host and then assign license. Now, if we had added an ESXi license, we would see that listed. We would be able to choose it and then that would apply it to the host. So the license process is very simple. If you haven't added your host to vCenter, you can simply do that from the host client, or if it's managed with vCenter server, you can assign the license in vCenter server with the vSphere client. What do you think about the first things that I do with VMware ESXi? I hope this video helps you guys out with areas of the configuration that are beneficial to configure out of the box with a clean VMware ESXi installation. All of these configurations are things that I typically do in a production environment as well as in the home lab. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already. Happy home labbing, and I will see you guys soon.